Taking risks is difficult for anyone, especially insecure teens. You seem to have taken many risks in your career. How do you find the courage and what advice can you give teens to help overcome our fears? Um, I think that it's very difficult to live in a world um, and the more technology we have, the more obsessed we become with, you know, people's lives and, you know, it's, um, it's, uh, it's, it's tough enough without all of that. But I think the essential thing is to know that everybody feels the same way. If you're in an office environment or a high school environment or, you know, an elementary school, it's, it's, a, it's a confined world and there are pressures and some people aren't as nice as others. Um, but you just have to stay on your own path and not get lost and be too worried about what other people are thinking of you because if you try to define yourself through the acceptance of other people, you may not get it and you really have to do it for yourself and you have to stick to your gut instincts and stick to your creativity or what it is inside that makes you, you know, have that passion. Um, in life and and don't let other people deter you um, because when you're in a small environment those pressures of what other people are thinking or doing um, can be very strong and completely sidetrack you and the important thing is to stay focused and stay true to yourself and that is the path to which I think you will find that like happiness and success no matter what level it is no matter what it is that you choose to do in the world just stay on your path and trust yourself at the age of 14 you went back into rehab after a suicide attempt what would you say to teens who are suffering from depression or having suicidal tendencies I think I, I would just have to go back to you know what I what I now know which is just to persevere and find people who are safe and honest and who will give you tough love um, and, and will guide you through the times because you really can't do everything on your own. You need love and support around you. Um, and to believe that you will get past these times, you will overcome, things will get better. Um, life is a series of ups and downs and the good news when you're in a low is that it will go up again and things will become safe and clear and beautiful. Um, and life is also not a free journey. You, there's a lot of lessons you have to learn along the way, but um, just to appreciate the gift of it and find people that will be honest with you. What is one thing you know now that you wish you had known as a teenager? I guess I would say I wished uh, that I knew I would actually survive heartbreak. Sometimes you think it's so bad that it actually will physically end you, but you make it through somehow. And with the help of your friends, and like that's those are the journeys that make you a good friend to someone else or have that self possession or that self wisdom as you have to go through those experiences. But God, when I was young, I thought heartbreak was the worst thing ever. I just thought I was going to die inside. And then you realize, you know what? You have some really interesting relationships that help form you along the way in life. And, you know, those, those heartaches are actually interesting and make you stronger and better. That's one thing that just came to mind. Unfortunately, my father, years ago, turned to alcohol abuse to numb his depression. Do you have any advice for teenagers who use alcohol or drugs to avoid dealing with their emotions or with the challenges in their lives? I think as you get older, the more you start to appreciate the word balance. And, um, you know, that everything in life is about balancing. And um, I completely understand the desire to have fun, um, but it doesn't mean getting high is what's going to be the funnest stuff in life. And, um, you actually need to feel those feelings and go through them in order to come out the other side and be stronger and wiser for it. It's like heartbreak. It's like if you're in a bad family situation, if you're in an environment that isn't socially warm and accepting, you have to live through those things and wear those badges with such honor 
knowing that you really did the work in order to get through them and become a stronger and more sensitive person. So obviously partying is not going to lead you to that reward because it doesn't have that truth and that realization of, you know, what really earning the knowledge will bring. If there is one thing that you could change about your life, what would it be and why? Um, I would make paparazzis go away because <laughs> they are the worst. Um, uh, but that's just my thing, you know. I'm some. I'm sure someone in some office somewhere is like, God, I wish my manager would just go take a flying leap, or God, I wish that girl in my high school who was just making fun of me all the time, you know, would just please move to another state. Um, you know, I, I so understand that feeling, and it's really, it's the same. And, and, and when I watched films growing up, I loved filmmakers like John Hughes or, you know, these particular the style of filmmaking that always um, treated young people in a way where their tone in the film, the, the, the problems that these teenagers or kids were going through seemed the same as adults. They were never talked down to, they weren't belittled. I think heartbreak and fear and acceptance and rejection and trying to figure out who you are and what you want to do in life and who you want to do it with, those are all such really just important things when you're growing up and they feel as big as an, and important as adults when they deal with their problems. So I wanted to make a film that, you know, is about young people, but the stakes and the emotions and the fun and the risk and the lessons are kind of like dealt with in a way that's not talked down to because I think kids are smart and they're savvy and when films are made about their problems and their journeys that they go on where they're as, as important as adults, that's the kind of films I related to when I was a kid. In making Whip It, what was the hardest thing about being both an actor in front of the camera and a director behind the camera? Um, genuinely, it was, it was the opposite. It was a, a complete help because um, I don't relate to people. Uh, first of all, I could never sit on the sidelines. I'd have to get in there. Um, and I didn't want to be the kind of director that was like, oh, I know it's scary and terrifying, but just go in there and do it. I wanted to learn the sport as well, understand the pain and the fear that comes along with it. Um, I wanted to be there to encourage and like celebrate with everyone when they learned. And I learned from doing the Charlie's Angels movies that that training camp allows you to have two things that are vital and can't be had without the process, which is an ability so that you get out there when you've learned all this stuff and you're just excited to show it and express it because you've taken the time to learn it and you're passionate about it and you're physically capable and you're seeing the people really do it. And also that bonding of bruises and pain or overcoming challenges or finally jumping that thing on skates. I mean, and you know, I, it just the bond that sort of comes with that experience is, is what forms true friendships. And so that chemistry in the film is real. These girls really know each other and they've been through things together. And so it's not just actors walking on a set, shaking hands and being like, okay, we're on a team and it's fake. It's not.